Buick as a brand is something that you probably associate with a car that your grandmother drives. They make old people cars, but recently they've been making strides with vehicles like the Regal to be more useful. This 2014 Buick Enclave, on the other hand, isn't one of those. It's still kind of a granny wagon. Let's take a look at it and check the tech. Now it's gonna separate this Buick from something that's wearing, say, a Chevrolet or GMC badge. It's gonna be chrome. Lots and lots of chrome. We've got this big old grill up here. We've got optional 19 inch chrome wheels. And like every other Buick model in the lineup, we've got this sort of chrome porthole thing happening on the hood, sort of indicating power. But I mean, this isn't a particularly powerful vehicle. It's a big doughy seven passenger SUV. But if you wanna fit people in there with plenty of space, this is kind of the body style that you're stuck with. Now, one of the nicer features of this top tier premium model are gonna be these HID headlamps. Now they're gonna be underneath an LED strip that's gonna be your daytime running lamps. But when you turn the steering wheel, you'll see that the projectors do steer a little bit with the front wheels to help you see around corners better. Now the Buick's cabin has a lot of neat technology, but I can't shake the feeling that this feels kind of like a five or seven year old car that's got new tech tacked onto it. First of all, you look at the dashboard, particularly at night, you've still got that sort of sickly green glow to the instrument cluster and all of the dashboard illumination. You've also got a couple of interesting things happening here. Uh, for example, you've got a small uh, LCD in the instrument cluster where you'll control a couple of vehicle settings. Uh, you'll also see your trip computer information, but rather than putting the controls for interacting with that up here or on the steering wheel, they're actually down here at the bottom of the dashboard, a couple of buttons here, which means that if you want to switch from your current fuel economy to your range to empty, you've got to look down at the dashboard and then back up and down at the dashboard and back up. It's terribly distracting. That's a 6.5 inch color touchscreen, which is a decent size, but we're living in a time where we're seeing eight inch or larger screens in the dashboard. And what that means is with this smaller screen, you get tinier buttons, the text is a little bit more difficult to read. And that means that you spend more time looking at the screen and hunting for your touch points than you would with a bigger screen where you can kind of more casually point and shoot. The interesting thing about this touch screen also is it's not as responsive as I'd like it to be. If you're used to using a touch screen tablet or a smartphone where you just kind of casually touch your buttons, you're going to be disappointed to find that you're going to have to really get into it with this thing in order to get it to respond to your touches. Now what you're gonna get for your trouble with the IntelliLink system is hard drive based navigation system. That's pretty good. It's got traffic that comes down from Sirius XM uh, via their nav traffic system. And it'll even give you updates on upcoming traffic jams as you drive down the highway. The problem with that is that it kind of pops up every five minutes, even once you've confirmed that you know the traffic is there and this is the route that you wanna go down. So if you get tired of it saying traffic in 30 miles, traffic in 25 miles, you're just gonna end up turning the system off and then you don't get any benefit at all. You've also got a pretty decent suite of uh, audio options. That's gonna include a DVD player in the dashboard for this that also accepts CDs. Uh, you've got MP3 playback via an iPod or a USB storage device. Uh, from a USB port, which is weirdly located up here at the top of the dashboard in a cubby hole instead of down here or in the center console where you could reach it easily. You've also got Bluetooth for hands-free calling and audio streaming. And if you've got a compatible Bluetooth phone synced to it, when you get a text message, it will pop up on the screen and give you the option to tap one button and have that message read aloud to you. And then you can fire back a canned response. And if you've got a compatible smartphone paired with a Pandora app on it, you've also got Pandora controls in the dashboard so you can access those custom stations with thumbs up and thumbs down controls. Now at our premium trim level, a lot, if not all of the safety tech is just gonna be rolled in. So we're gonna have a Ford collision warning, which is going to let you know if you're approaching a vehicle ahead too quickly and a collision's imminent. It'll flash a little red light on the dashboard at you and let you know to uh, get on those brakes before you run into somebody. You've also got blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. So if there's a car in your blind spot at highway speeds, you get a little red light. Uh, and if you put your turn signal on, it'll beep to let you know someone's there. And if you're backing out of a parking spot, and a car is coming uh, across traffic, it'll sound a little alert to let you know to keep your eyes up and uh, watch for those vehicles coming. We've also got a standard rear view camera at this trim level that does have the trajectory lines that move with the steering wheel when you're reversing. And there's a rear proximity sensor to let you know as you're approaching a vehicle or a person or a pet uh, with an audible alert. Now, underneath the Enclave's uh, really short hood, there's not a lot to see because there's a lot of plastic cladding here. And that's gonna be part of this automaker's sound deadening technology, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. But if you just yank that off, you'll find somewhere underneath all of this hosing and tubing 
their 3.6 liter V6 engine. Now this direct injected engine is gonna get you 288 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque. It's also the only engine option available for this vehicle. Now, 288 horsepower sounds like a lot, but not for a vehicle of this size, a big seven passenger vehicle. It's just gonna give you decent acceleration and pretty good fuel economy. That power is gonna exit the engine via a single option automatic transmission with seven speeds, but you do get a choice between drivetrains. You can either get the Enclave as a front wheel drive vehicle, or for 2,000 extra bucks, you can get it as an all wheel drive, like this example, with their Stabilitrack technology. Fuel economy is gonna be decent at about 16 miles per gallon city 22 highway. I'm averaging about 20, but I'm doing a lot of highway driving during my testing. Now when you settle in behind the wheel of the Buick Enclave and take it for a spin, you immediately realize that maybe technology and gee whiz gadgetry isn't exactly the object of the game here. What Buick is trying to do is give you a car that is very comfortable, uh, that'll get people from where they're going with minimum fuss. And this car does a pretty good job of that. They put a lot of technology into the suspension tune, into the wheel and tire package, into the deadening in the body of the vehicle and the engine bay. They've even like triple laminated the windscreen and glass. All these things kind of come together to give you a very quiet ride. But then it doesn't really feel inspiring. Uh, the seven speed automatic transmission doesn't really want to give you access to all the power that it has and even if it did I'm not really sure that it would really make this vehicle feel sprightly but the engine is really smooth and the transmission is also smooth you can barely tell that the shifts are happening there is a little bit of oddness to do with the uh, seven-speed automatic transmission and that is that it has a sort of secret kind of hidden manual shift mode in order to get into it you'll pull your shifter down into the L selection and that's normally on most cars where you'll find your low gear ratio but in this case it's your manual mode. Once you're there you'll use this little rocker switch a little bit you'll activate with your thumb that's on the side of the shifter to shift up and to shift down. It's not really the most efficient way to do it but if you ever find yourself in that maybe once in a lifetime situation where you need to manually shift this vehicle that's where you'll find it. Now comes the time when we figure out how much is this going to cost you. The 2014 Buick Enclave is going to start at $39,665, but that's the entry point. If you want the safety check that we talked about, you're going to want to go at the premium group with all-wheel drive. And that's going to bring you to a starting point of $51,995, plus about $925 to get it to the dealership. Now our model has $3,640 in tech, that's going to include the IntelliLink dashboard tech, the rear seat entertainment and sunroof. And that's going to bring us to our as tested price of $52,880. But if you want to do it CNET style, skip that rear seat entertainment. That's going to bring you down to about fifty grand. Even fully loaded up like this, the 2014 Buick Enclave isn't a tech powerhouse, but it's got pretty good safety tech and a decent amount of dashboard technology. It's kind of a vehicle for people who want to get from point A to point B, but aren't necessarily in a rush to get there. They want to get their five to seven passengers there as comfortably and as quietly as possible. <laughs>